going to have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for all that you have done and all that you're going to do. Heavenly Father, I'm asking you to open up our understanding and give us a revelation from heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah. Uh, for all who are watching on social media, we say welcome to the Wednesday evening Bible study. Uh, we're still in the book of Gender of a Lifetime by Thomas C. Hunger, the 52 lesson study. It is actually a good book and for, for Bible study. Uh, right now we're in the book of Daniel. We're going to be jumping around from a little bit of page, but we we'll still be in Daniel. Uh, in this one, it's about history and prophecy. From 1 to 6, it's about the history, and from 7 to 12, it's about prophecy. So here in the book of Daniel, we're going to see that the name of Daniel and his three friends have been changed. And I'm going to give you the name of the first name and then the name that they had changed it to. I'm going to give it to you what it means. Okay? Uh, Daniel was in Babylon as an exit from J Judah. He was apparently taken there as a boy in 606 B.C., a few years earlier than Ezekiel had been. Daniel was really more of a faith man than a prophet, but, but his book clearly leaves no doubt that he was a prophet of the whole as well. The book of Daniel is to the Old Testament what the book of Revelation to the New Testament. Therefore, therefore he, what happened, and it revealed itself into the New Testament. It called the apostles, the Old Testament, Daniel, like Ezekiel is in the book, filled with vision. The word vision, or vision, is found over 30 times in this book. The book of Daniel is called as the book of Revelation. Both books deal with man of sin, the tribulation power, the second coming, and the judgment. The circumstances, the book of Daniel and the Apostle John are similar in that book. Both books were why they were in the distance, and both men saw vision. So from when Daniel arrived in Babylon, he was a young man, was good looking and intelligent, with the similar place for him among the Celestial Special Training. Uh, along with Daniel, the, uh, the three of his friends, Hunter, Lathan, and Archer, which are these friends' names came to. Where to read to Daniel 1 and 7? You see, the, na the name came to uh, Sarah, Marissa, and Abendah. Them names have been turned to the Babylon name because these are the Hoobie boys 
that got and got caught and carried away. So they changed their name to that to that. So here we go with the name Daniel. Daniel was Balazai. And his name means bear protect his life. But Daniel also name means from Daniel itself, it means that uh, God this that the God is my dad. Uh, the Hebrew names have been changed into the Babylon name. And so why they changed it, we don't know. And it's certainly just that it has to be changed and guess because they was in the medical situation. Uh, Han Hanya, God is gracious before his name was changed. And the uh Nisha was Miss here me who is God who is what God is, who is what God is. And for his Hebrew name is the, that draw with force. And Yaya, Yaya had help. And then you know his name means in Babylon the service of light shining. So the Hebrew name was changed. And so it was changing through all of that. That's around the sixth century BC. And so as we go, we're gonna read Daniel 1, 11 and 14. Time. Uh, before we get that, we're going to finish out this. The Babylon did not observe Jewish law concerning clean and unclean food. Neither did they drain the blood from the slimy animals. Even though so, Daniel and his friend are young, they will not compare their religion by eating the clean, unclean food. They refuse to conform, even though so most of the other Jews are probably going along with the Babylon customer. Daniel and his friends could have been like many Christians today, made excuse like, why not? Everyone else doing it, or why? We are away from home, so we will, who will ever know? Instead of this, here we go. Instead of what Daniel and his friend perfect as a text. This is from Daniel 11 through 14, Daniel 1. They ask not the vegetable, they ask not. Mela to give them vegetable and water for ten days and then examine to see if they was as sick as the other eating unclean food. Now when we start eating unclean food See, the vegetable means the thing drawn from seed and clean vegetable and grain. The request for water is that the Daniel and his friend did not want to drink wine, probably because, like the food, it was tied to idols. So he didn't want to drink wine and they didn't 
decide to idle. And so when we don't do that and unclean food at the crust and lie to them, we should also keep ourselves and our bodies as well as clean and healthy. So then what the test that they asked for for 10 days to eat, not to eat, other eating the unclean food. And 15, Daniel 1 and 15, and 19 to 20, tell me, am I reading that? Daniel 1 and 15, the next question, then you have the next question. What are the results of the test? They look healthier than the others. They are brought before the king and find to be more intelligent than the magician and artisan. God is doubt like a magician and he doubt like the artisan. It's like a fortune teller. But it's what God is saying is better and further included that Daniel and his friend was healthier than the young men who ate of the king's table. Daniel was more, and his friend was more healthier than anybody at the table. And if we go to Daniel 2, 45, Daniel just finished his training when he is faced with the his face test. King Nether had a dream that troubled him. He had forgotten what is, the dream is about. The face he called the magician after an astrologer to show him his dream. What did King Mazafa say he would do to the magician out if they cannot cause him to recall his dream and interpret it for him? He said he were, they will be cut to pieces and their home destroyed. If they cannot interpret the dream, he promised a great. If they can in interpret the dream, he promised them the great reward at Daniel 2 and 6. What does the wise man tell the king as he continues to demand to know the dream and it interpreted? We go to 2 and 11. No one can do what he had asked. No one can do it. Because the green actually coming from God, and if God only imitates to a person who is well in him, who dwell in him, not looking for fortune teller or anything that would tell him about the green. He, they could not answer what he asked because it wasn't for them to answer. When, the, when they gave the king this answer, he ordered all wise men, including Daniel and his friends, to be slain. That's Daniel 2, 12 and 13. Therefore, Daniel asked that he might be given time before the king to interpret the dream 
Then Daniel and his friends seek God in the, and in a night vision, God revealed the green and it meaning to Daniel. Then you go to 2 and 14 through 19. And when Daniel tell the green and it meaning to the king, how does King Nestor reward Daniel? The king gave Daniel many awards and gifts and to make him ruler over the whole provision of Babylon. He wanted him, after he did it, he gave him ruler over them. And so when we go down, the fire furnace introduced in chapter 3. We'll be jumping. This one is the most dry story in the Bible. Now that says, set up an image made of gold and command all the people to fail, die, and worship it. If any refuse, he had them cast into a frowning furnace. Why? Because they did not command to do what it was told to do. They were supposed to command to worship it. And that is the given. The commandment is given at a sound of an instrument. All should fail down and worship the golden image. Three and five. And when the music sound, what three men refused to whip it, the idol. Sama, me, and the eye. They refused to do that because they didn't consider as an idol, they do not worship idols. Country, they are thrown into the fairy fire. What happened to them? They do it is here seven times the normal temperature. It was heated seven times the normal temperature. Not even their hair is thinning. Nothing happened because of the God that they serve. We serve a mighty God. We serve a good God because for the faith is we worship him in spirit and in truth. We serve a mighty God. He did not let nothing happen to them. So they heated the temperature seven times normal than they ever had, not even their half time because God was with them. The Lord may not always keep us out of the furnace, but as we see in this story, he will, will be with us through it all. Otherwise, whatever we're going through, God is there for us. God is there for us. God is there. And the minor story from this book is found in chapter 6. The lion den incident. Why is Daniel thrown into the den of lions? Because he was praying three times a day. I don't think there's nothing wrong praying three times a day. Because 
if it haven't been for the God on your side, where would you be? Yeah. And so they started with the sin to pray, to pray to God three times a day. There's nothing wrong praying to God three times a day. Now Daniel, now when Daniel knew that the written was signed, the writing was signed, he went home and in the, his upper room with his window open toward Jerusalem, he kneeled down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he custom every early day. He was giving God thanks. He was giving God thanks for things that whatever was signed, he was giving God thanks. Because without, without giving God thanks, we need to be thankful and grateful for what God had done and what he's going to do in your life. And to take me by the woman for King, Daniel with some praying by the window of his house that opened towards Jerusalem, his enemy was correct assuming if Daniel was forced to choose between the deceit of the earthly king and the eternal word of the king of heaven, he would choose his God. That Daniel was doing what was right and what he believed. And Daniel was still a man of faith. And so when and that and that sit Daniel six and twenty two, what happened to the lion again? God sent an angel to shut the lion mouth. Why? Cause Daniel didn't do anything wrong. God was protecting him. God was protecting him. And so when God protecting you, you are to be powerful and thankful for why he is protecting you. Because for the thing is this, God might take you through some stuff, but he, you're not in that thing by yourself because he took you through it. You're not in it by yourself. And it will help you just because he don't deliver you right then and there. It will help you to get stronger. See, we already know we're going through three trials. We're coming in, we're going through it, and we come out of it. When we come out of it, we come out of it victorious, victory, mm -hmm. not even hurt, and you like to lose your mind, but you didn't lose your mind because God is in the midst of what, what you are doing. Mm -hmm. And he's burning you through because just because he don't deliver you right then and there, Sometimes it takes faith. It takes faith to keep going, to go through what you got to go through. It keeps you on your knees, actually. It keeps you on your knees because you know you can't handle this situation by yourself. And so even though you can't handle the situation by yourself, it, that it keeps you on your knees, and that's what it is. Up to chapter 7, Daniel is being encouraged to dream or other, but now 
he had a vision of his own. In chapter 7, you see the four beasts in his dream. What does Daniel say the beasts represent? The four kings who will come to power. That's what it means. The chapter 7, when it implicates the dream of the four beasts, the four kings who will come to power. Through these, we have much disagreement and a sudden which for empire, the beast president, the fallen general itself, the lion is the Bible line, seven and four. The bear is Percy, five, seven and five. And the leopard is the Greek empire of Alexander the Great, seven and six. However, the fourth beast is different from any of the perverted ones. It is a dreadful and terrible and strong feet and the great iron teeth. Daniel 7 and 7. The beast seemed to correspond to the Roman Empire. But it also seemed to go beyond the period into the last day, seven and nine. The umpire, the Greek, the bear, Alexander the Great. They all coming up. They all coming up. They all coming up. God spoke, and here we in Daniel 9, Daniel 9, 20 to 27, God spoke to Daniel through the angel Gabriel, that's 9 and 21, what Daniel doing when God sent Gabriel to speak to him, and what lesson he might have for Christian today. Prayer and confessing his sin. We need to be prayed up and confessed up to hear from God. Anytime we are, we are need to be prayed up and confessed up. Because when we're being prayed up, and we confessing. Also, not only confess our sin, but I call confess the sin of your nation. Because sin is sin, no matter how we look at it. But in the nation, everybody, uh, the governor is not doing right. The president is not doing right. All of them empire that is not doing right. We are to confess the sin of our nation. So confess to hear from God. We are to confess our sin and the nation sin so we can hear from God. We all have done something wrong I don't care if it's that little or that big. It's not that God can't handle it or will not forgive you, but you need to confess it, turn away from it, so you can hear from heaven, and so you can also hear from God. From verse 24 to 27, extremely different impact and have a nerve turn. However, predictions of this prophecy are clear. God had ordained a period of seven times seven. Otherwise, years. Seventy weeks of years, which is the salvation of the people. And that will be also in Daniel 9 and 24. Some believe that that number should be taken 
symbol. However, the period of time between the saints who rebuild the temple and Jerusalem and the crucifixion are simply too close to overlook. Interpreter. In this brief study, however, there is not a space to discuss it. Whatever is interpreted in this verse, one must admit that not only did they speak of a Ben of Daniel day, but also into the future revealing God and his divine plan for commitment of the age. Daniel saw is not putting Christ, despite a seminar with Christ, appeared in Revelation 1, 12 through 16. Daniel probably saw an angel because Jesus would not need help from the angel Michael as this angel did. That's from Daniel 10 and 13. Whenever the question is very missed, Daniel had another vision in chapter 10, which describes his encounter with a man in lining whose line was grilled with fine gold uh, up. That's Daniel 10 and 5. The similar of Daniel 10, 5 to 15, and Revelation 1, 12 to 15, 16. It is simply too great to overlook from reading the two passages whom with one conclusion Daniel incurred in this vision. But the Lord Jesus Christ Probably the Lord Jesus Christ, probably an angel, was amazed in chapter 11, decided the Greek Empire may have interpreted in 11, 21 to 45, as a reference of the archetype. It could hardly be disputed in verse 36 to 45. A reference I only mentioned in Second Timothy 2, 3 to 4, and John, the vision of the beast in Revelation 13, 5 to 8. Chapter 12 again speaks of tribulation in verse 1, but more important in verse 2, we find the first specific reference refer in the Old Testament to something I believe will be a part of the restoration. The reason Daniel could not understand all this prophecy and why he could not understand it is found in Daniel 12 and 9. He filling up, meaning the seal until the end of time. He was, he was telling them, and he had to seal it up because the end of time, until the end of time. And so we basically in something, and we can't hurry because the end of time is getting close, and it is coming near. But we have to have, we have to have more, we pray that more, we need to, sometimes we need to set everything out, even TV and cell phone, so we can hear from God. We can hear from God in heaven. If we just take our time and conform things and let it be signing up, 
Now the Old Testament is good and it's fulfilling what it is happening going into the New Testament. So we are in this prime of time. Everything is still until the end of time because it ain't time. We don't want to get ahead. We don't want to get ahead of God. We don't want to get ahead of God because once we get ahead of God, we will mess up. We will mess up. We will mess things up. And so we have to take it as God says to do it. And as we know that the end of time is near, and filling means still until the end of time, for Daniel, for Daniel can even know what it is mean for this prophecy because he couldn't understand it. And so when we don't understand nothing, when God don't want us to bring it out, he's like he told John, fill it up. He told John the same thing, say no more. Let's fill it up. Because it just, we are the people that need to stay in the Word. We might not know everything, but we can always pray about everything. We might not know about everything, but we can always pray about anything. And if God, God is a good God. Mm -hmm. When the time is right, he will give you the answer. When the time is right, he will give you the answer. Until then, just keep praying. Mm -hmm. Because God will give you the answer. And also, he does, it's just like a baby. You know, a baby ain't ready to eat table food when he gets a baby. You know that. So God knows when you are ready to get and be stabilized to get the answer. He knows when you are ready to have the answer. Until then, He's not going to give it to you until you are ready for it. That's the time. When you, when you are children, you're not going to give your kid something to hurt him or her before they get drunk because it's something they're not ready for. You're not going to buy them a car and they're not ready for a car. You're not going to give them anything what they're not ready for. And the same thing with God. If we're not ready for it, he's not going to give it to us. It didn't say he wouldn't give it to us. He just said we ain't ready for it yet. When it's time for it to get ready, then he will give it to us. And so we have to understand and sometimes when we pray, we have to look at us. Are we praying out of sadness? Are we praying out of sadness or are we praying from the heart? Because if we praying out of sadness, that's something me, 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 and I, I, I want. But praying for the heart. Like, I'm confessing my sin. I'm confessing for the nation. I'm confessing for this city. I am confessing. We all have something to go on and to live for. 
that as we come close and hear this, if any question, and I would advise you to read Daniel. And I advise you to read Daniel because Daniel is close like Revelation and John. They are close and, and for the answer. So it's good and have your Bible. If, I, if you don't understand your Bible, get a Bible that you can understand. But read Daniel. Take your time and read it. Ask God to open up your understanding. And so he will do that. And so as we close, we're going to say, if you haven't known Jesus Christ, this is your invitation to accept him as your personal Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. And would you please repeat after me, Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sin. I know that you have died for my sin and you have risen from the dead and you are paying the price for my sin. And so, Heavenly Father, from this day forward, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. I turn away from sin and I'm coming to you. I believe that you is the living God. And so right now I'm asking you to clean me and make me right as snow. Purify me. And I thank you for it. I will live for you from this day forward. Amen. If you say that prayer and mean it from your heart, you shall be saved. And God is rejoicing over one angel. On the behalf of our pastor, Pastor Curtis Whitaker, who gave me this opportunity to bring forth this word this, this evening. Until next time, keep walking by faith and keep reading your word and if you can we have our Sunday morning service at 11 15 come on in the sanctuary uh, you can watch it again online and if any of these messages been a blessing to you Sow a seed. See, when you sow a seed, you open up the door for you, whatever you need. So if this, any of this lesson been a blessing to you, grateful, sow a seed. You can sow it at 201 East 5th Avenue in Jay, Indiana, 46402, or you can go to Cass Island. PCC Gary. And we, whatever you send, it is a donation, it will be appreciated. So we say we love you. Good night. And keep walking by faith. Amen. Yes.